What, Danny? You. <laughs> what are you, the fuck are you doing? I own beans. <laughs> oh, yeah? I'm sitting here on the couch doing what, Leo? You're holding cans of beans. You got your top hat on. I've never, you're never a nice guy when you have your fucking top hat on. Let's be honest. I own beans. I am a bean kingpin. You own beans. Nice. What are, what are your favorite beans, kid? Soybeans. Oh, it's funny yeah? you ask. You know why? Why? Because I am in an index fund <laughs> through my Fidelity app. I become a bigger, bigger investor. Some people in some circles are already starting to call me a tycoon. No. One of my index funds is called DBC. It's for commodities. Mm. Commodities. And I bought it. I put in a veritable truckload of cash, mm -hmm. not knowing what it was. But I looked this weekend and I found out, Leo, mm -hmm. that I own over $2,000 of corn, <laughs> assorted fruit, and soybeans through this commodity index fund. Really? Soybeans. Soybeans? You know, they... they, they hike up your estrogen they're very bad for the male i don't care okay. nobody else knows that and you know how many products a need lot. soybeans a lot, a lot of products need soybeans so every america people are starting to say runs on soy jesus really dunkin donuts is in the middle of a lawsuit from the bean lobby really America runs on soybeans, not really? Dunkin'. Is soy sauce from coming from soybeans? I don't pay attention to any of that. Mm -hmm. I stick to my lane, unlike you. What are you invested in, Leo? What right are you now? invested in? Yeah, now. Right now, I have Disney, Tesla, um, this shitty company, NAK, NKLA. I'm still in there, unfortunately. And this really good penny stock that's mm -hmm. been growing called SENS mm -hmm. sends well, you're mistaken because uh -huh. NKLA isn't your only shitty stuff. <laughs> they all suck. Because you Austin, bastard. Austin's a conspiracy theorist. I know he'll dig this. When the dollar collapses and when Washington falls, uh -huh. Disney and NKLA or whatever yeah. the else other shit you're in is going to disappear. But there's always going to be an honest, God-fearing farmer on the corner of Main Street with a soybean cart. What the fuck is going on? Are you trying to get me into soy? Do you want me to invest in soy right now? What's going on? All of you, whether it be your parents' college fund they set up for you, whether it be your piggy bank, or whether you got to go to your daddy's nightstand and steal his wallet, you need to get whatever funds you can and put them in DBC Commodities Index to own soybeans. DBC Commodities Index. You do that on E-Trade? What, what do you need? A, what a program do you need or what a app? I do it honest to God, the old fashioned way, Leo. Uh -huh. I had it all on my Fidelity app. Mm -hmm. I had it just through my iPhone, mm -hmm. but I decided when the dollar collapses, when Washington falls, this stuff isn't going to be reliable. The cell towers are going to come down. Are you buying actual soy and keeping it stored somewhere? Where the fuck do you think I got these cans? You are, you're losing it. Where Do you have a storage unit for this? I'm not going to tell you where my safe, my mini Fort Knox, is <laughs> but there is a tremendous stockpile of soybeans are you gonna eat them like what do you what's the point here what are you no. doing with them you're, you're saving them for they have an expiration date danny i don't know if you know this <gasps> it's years from now but there's an expiration. if you get any of those fucking cans dented botulism have you heard of botulism oh i've heard about it it was a big risk when i did the making prison wine video but really? i overcame it then i will overcome it again could you die from bot you can die from botulism i'm you pretty can sure die? you can lose your mind Really? Wait, yeah. Wait, how, when you made the prison one, I always had some questions about that. I, you know, that was your your questionable days on YouTube. What was going great on? Great video, not questionable at all. It was a great video. I agree. I can't believe so many people drank that shit. What did it taste like? Was it not rotting by the time you? Prison wine tasted fine. Mm -hmm. I'll stick to it, but. It pales in comparison to the taste of a good soybean smoothie. Fuck. What is a soy? What are these soybeans about? What is soy going on? All I care about my channel. If you guys have come to this podcast, to the main channel, Leo's channel, Austin's live streams for comedy. I got bad news. Soon. All of our channels are just going to be propaganda for soybeans. We're going to get enough people into it that the stock is going to take off like an Apollo rocket. 
It's going to take off like an Apollo rocket, and we're going to reap the benefits. DBC commodities. I, as I said, I sold all that. Now okay. it's cash to farmer. I've been taking flights to Iowa, flights to Nebraska, and I'm doing this the old-fashioned way. You're buying, you're just buying fucking cans of soybeans? I didn't even know you could do that. You can do whatever you want through the power of greenback dollars. You're bringing them back to Los Angeles? For a while, because actually soon the dollar is going to collapse and Washington's going to fall. But right now, Shit. cash and contact with farmers does a lot. Yeah, I'm bringing them back to L.A., so what? When do you think the dollar will uh, crash? Because I need to maybe take my money out of the stock market before that you should get into real estate you should get into real estate did i tell you i've been getting into real estate did you buy some land or something stop did you put in an offer to a house stop dude did you really i was walking down my street oh god in this neighborhood of west los angeles recently and as i walked down the street everyone's like hi mr mullen hi i walk around to my top hat people call me mr mullen now they call you mr mullen huh and i walked you're well known in the area. I walked all the way to the end of Jefferson Boulevard where there is an orphanage. <sighs> you are. There's no way anybody would ever sell you an orphanage. There's no way they will sell you an orphanage. Anybody will sell you an orphanage yeah. if you have enough collateral in the form of soybeans. Do you think <laughs> if okay, what if somebody had put all your like pedophile jokes from all the videos? on a loop and showed it to the orphanage you think you'd still you'd be in the running to get it if somebody put together a cosmic reel of jp morgan fucking all of his mistresses <laughs> on his yacht the corsair uh, do you think any of the railroad bosses <laughs> would have spoken out against him no no uh, they still would no. have quivered and feared when i yes. walked into that orphanage <gasps> hello mr mullen <gasps> And I walked over mm -hmm. like Scrooge approached the desk of Bob Cratchit. Mm -hmm. I'm watching a show right now, the, the Queen's Gambit, about she was an orphan and she becomes like a genius at chess. I saw good. that that propaganda women can do everything film. I watched the teaser and I was like, we get it. She's a smart chick and she's good at stuff and men don't believe she's good at it. We get it. Oh Movie my summarized. God. No need to watch it yourselves, kiddos. You know, I didn't think of it that way. It could be a propaganda for that guy. I don't know. It... I don't know. There's some strong male characters in there. There, there there's some. She gets very. Uh, she's, you know, succumbed by the old school 1960s way that men succumb. You know, get girls. She's very into the alphas. So I don't know. She's not an alpha herself. So it glorifies the Leo Dottavio way of seducing women. It glorifies the Leo Dottavio uh, way of of getting of approaching women. Absolutely. Okay. Well, maybe I'll give it another shot. Give it another shot. Yeah. There's, there's some good mail. Yeah. If it's it promotes good. the macho shit and the slap oh, yeah. in a broad's ass. Yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. give it. A, it just looked to me like recently all mm -hmm. I've been seeing is this victim narrative. I get on Spotify. I'm looking for some good stand up comedy. I was listening to some Tom Papa, some Kurt Metzger. Kurt Metzger especially was dynamite. But I see it suggests to me women of comedy women of comedy and women is spelled with the upside down women thing mm -hmm. that the nidoran pokemon card the the what the tr the cross-dressing pokemon chick i just recently learned that that pokemon can't breed so our prediction that it's probably a transsexual might be true we're on to something but women of comedy and i look and it's got some chick with just the most femmy, dikey haircut you've ever seen. She's wearing a leather jacket. She's got her arms crossed. She's scowling like Rhonda the Riveter. And I just thought, do I want to listen? This is not a comedy album so much as it is a 45-minute ideology propaganda machine. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just, I look through the names. I look through the bits. It's uh, the tracks instead of being funny titles or subjects that the ladies examine. It's just like men are pigs. Like Hillary Clinton should be president. It's just call it women talking into microphones. Yeah. Who gave you permission to use the term comedy? <laughs> it's just women talking into microphones, women standing on a stage saying things when they're on their period. <laughs> Some of the black women are pretty good, though. I have to give it up to, for the black comedians. They're, black women they're better, are way more funny. Way funnier than white women. And Ellen DeGeneres is pretty funny, though. But she's a man, obviously, like we said the last time. But um, also, you know, they made Star-Lord. You don't watch the Marvel movies, but Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a good one. 
They made him a bisexual. He has a threesome with a man and a woman in the in the in a new comic book that came out. In a book or in the movie? In the, in the comic book, not in the movie yet. But the, it's played by the most conservative, big time Hollywood guy, which is Chris Pratt. He's openly conservative, and it's kind of hilarious. Ooh. I wonder what he actually thinks about. It. He probably thinks it's terrible. My I'll, mom's actually friends with his parents. Really? I'm sure she would. That means she probably had sex with him because your oh mom. Oh my god! It's two degrees of separation with Austin's mom. If she knows somebody, she probably fucked one of their Jesus. famous. Musician friends. Damn, she listens friend. to this podcast. Hey, Mrs. Apologize. Slosher. Hey, Mrs. Slosher. I know Stop who you it. slept with. You are a bastard. If you take that back, Miss Slosher. You're a nice lady. You're attractive, but I know that you're not having sex with everyone you meet. You were having lots of fun back when you were young, when you were part of that group of the band. I'm not. Even, I'm going to call you. I'm not going to say you were a groupie, mm-hmm. but. You probably had some fun, but it was it was it was a time for you to have a phase. It was a phase, Danny. It's uh, not who she is. Leo, does having all four members of Motley Crue's dicks inside you at the same you time son of a qualify bitch. as fun? You think they fucking no way they quadruple put their no way that happened, Danny. There are three holes and at least one of those can fit two dicks. Oh, my God. So two. who were the two guys in the one hole? Mick Mars can never get his dick hard because he was a deathbed alcoholic. It's a miracle he's still alive. Mick bitch. Mars had his limp penis, uh, and I'll tell you where. Okay. The asshole with Tommy Lee. Oh. Because Tommy Lee's got a huge cock. It makes God. sense. Why would that go in the asshole then? That would be the most painful. Because it just seems right. And they were a little bit of sadists. They like oh, to cause my pain. God, I've man. read their bio. I've read it. I've read the book. Okay, okay, so that, and then we're, let's go on. Where were the other two penises? Vince Neal. We only Neil, have two of four now. Vince Neal always gets the prime hole okay. because he was the best looking guy. Mm-hmm. He was the Danny Mullen of the Danny Mullen <laughs> crew. Oh! See what I did there? I almost said Leo D'Otavio, then I remembered my, oh, I remember my cheekbones and I remember my Ralph Lauren. You know, deals. my girlfriend did say to, uh, the other this week, she said, Listen, if you think you're a cool because there's some the Danny Mullen fans are getting a little more attractive. Remember, if you hook up with any of them, they're going to be thinking about Danny's cock because he's the star of the channel. Your girlfriend said that to you. That's cold blooded. That she said that that is awesome. And I love the idea of Leo banging a groupie, excuse me, getting blown by a groupie in front of a Home Depot and her (sighs) pretending that Danny Mullen's skinny Five and three quarter inch <laughs> rod is between her incisors. Well, I love it's it. probably true. She made a good point. I, I agreed with her. I was like, you're probably right. I'm not going to be perusing my DMs for any of these Danny Mullen fans mm-hmm. that are above average. All right. The ones below average, on the other hand, with low average self-esteem. Maybe they'll enjoy my cock more. Right. Yeah. Or they Absolutely. might not think about you as well. Yeah. You know. So that's where we're at. Vince Neal, because he's the Danny Mullen of the Danny Mullen crew, will yeah. get the mouth. He needs the most clear space to work his magic. Mm-hmm. And then Nikki Six, the guy who overdosed on heroin, mm-hmm. who probably had some sort of hepatitis. He was old, too, will be right? taking Austin's mother up the vagina. Oh. And Mick Mars is the old one. I think Nikki was the only one that was, like, really friends with my mom. But I'm not. <laughs> Why are you using the word friend? Because they, they, it was like before they were famous, they were like friends. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. You realize what happened to your mom in a shitty North Hollywood apartment? Oh, my God. Stop it. Do you realize you need to read the book, uh, The Dirt? Danny, in court, this is one of the stories that's going to come up. And I'm going to have to be like, he, he did say he he did say that his mother had a train. Well, he did say she was involved in a fivesome with the entire crew. Yes. He during, said that? No, I'm saying uh, oh. I'm going to have to say to the judge that this oh. was, a, you know, he's going to be like this. It was mental torture yeah. for years. What do you think the case against you? It's going to this is really going to help his case. Austin's case against you. If you're talking about California labor law and us yeah. getting sued for some sort of harassment. Yes. We're well on our way. I <laughs> I recently set up Danny the Danny Mullen show. I wanted Jesse his holdings, but my accountant got me the Danny Mullen show. That's not bad. That's, That's a legally registered LLC in the state of California. Wow. And they sent me California this notice. It had a bunch of exclamation marks and threats. 
warning, you must send $127 to some office in Sacramento to get a labor poster to display prominently for your employees, letting them know their rights. I took this piece of mail, ripped it in half and threw it with anger into the trash. Well, I think you should get we should order one of those and then just draw dicks all over it. We should piss on it live on the podcast. <laughs> we should have while Austin catches the runoff in his hungry mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the day the that workers employee, have rights. One, <laughs> oh fuck! It'll be a day. We should that, we should hire Rat Dick Ralph for one day just to take a shit on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> what else would Rat Dick Ralph be good for? We could. Oh uh, yeah, I know. What else? Fighting the seal and in, in, uh in that's a ra- I would have loved. <laughs> I would my life would have been complete if we in San Francisco there was a seal that was popping in and out of the water, <laughs> and I said I wish. Good old Rat Dick Ralph is here because we would have sent them out into the water to fight the seal and it would have been great. Leo and I were walking to Treasure Island. It was late in the mm-hmm. shoot. We saw this seal, popped its head up out of the water, bloop, and it was checking us out. Yep. Yeah, who are these two? These are the best looking guys I've seen on Treasure Island in 10 yeah. years. It was like a little doggy. And we said jokingly, I wonder who in the crew we can make swim out there and try to get the sea line. <laughs> Rat Dick Ralph, of course. And he would have been great. And then him. afterwards, we were like, wait a second. We both know damn well he would actually, Mm -hmm. upon being asked, not even take his clothes off, just sprint at the water like Pamela Anderson and Baywatch, get in and swim out to the sea line. And that thing would bite him. It it might he might have died, to be honest, but he would have died (laughs) giving us a bit. And that's probably, you know, that's why he's probably not part of the crew, because we don't want him to die giving us a bit. I feel like Marty has a similar level of commitment. (laughs) That's a good to a bit. I'm glad you brought up Marty because. We were going to talk to him, uh, talk about him at some point. Do you have the article pulled up, boys? I haven't. Marty, this whole thing, I'm going to be honest, guys. I thought he was BSing. Mm -hmm. He tells me he goes into a church. He pulls out his penis. He grabs a bottle of wine Mm -hmm. from a bishop, whatever nonsense he was talking. Leo sends me this article this weekend. I could not (laughs) believe my eyes. We're going to pull it up. This is all real. Yes. This cobweb-brained Canadian is not fibbing. He wasn't fibbing. He wasn't fibbing, man. He wasn't fibbing. What do we do? Should we read this thing? Let's read it aloud. All right. I think it's a pretty concise article. So I say just top to bottom. All right. Give it a read, Lee, dog. Edmonton police have laid two charges against a 25-year-old man in connection to a hate crime at Edmonton's Santa Maria Goretti Church. Hate crime! Police say on December 13th, a man allegedly interrupted the service with offensive comments and gestures. <laughs> what were the gestures? I got to dude. He <laughs> also filmed the incident before posting it on social media. <laughs> Edmonton police say the video has since been removed and the man was charged with mischief and mischief to a religious property, a hate crime under the Criminal Code of Canada. According to Grandin Media, a website that shares information from the Catholic Archdiocese of Edmonton, three men used false names. I want to know what their name, what he uses the names to register for the 11 a.m. mass. Father George Puramandatil, Santa Maria Goretti's pastor, said he was cleaning the sacred Holy Communion items. When a man sacred. came up in a sacred, <laughs> sacred, <laughs> Marty McFly defiled a sacred place. What a bastard. Item, the sacred Holy Communion items when a man came up to the altar. I thought maybe a youth group member announcing something for Christmas. The, the pastor said the man started speaking in Italian. I didn't even know he could speak Italian before switching to English. He started to use very vulgar who language. Who knew he was speaking Italian? I don't know exactly who knew that. By the way, you know, when he when they say he started to use very vulgar language, he he's mentioned that he would blow everyone in the group. That's what he said up there. <laughs> he realized he went up one by one full names. I would blow. I would suck Danny Mullen's dick. I would suck Leo Dottavio's dick. I would suck Austin's dick. I would suck. He went to all of them. He started to use very vulgar language. Then I was not sure what was his intention. Nobody moved. <laughs> Perma detail explained. The pastor said the man then pulled a bottle of wine out of his pocket 
and opened it. That's when Peramendatil decided to intervene. I approached him and I said, please leave the church. We are celebra- we are celebrating mass. You cannot do that, the pastor said. Instead of doing so, <laughs> the intruder allegedly walked over to the wide in front of a family who had just baptized their baby, dropped his pants, and exposed himself. Oh, dude, no way that happened. It was unexpected, unacceptable. <laughs> Without our permission, without our permission, if they would have given him permission to do so, it would be fine. Also, nobody can do such a thing in the church. It was shocking for everyone, he said. As volunteers approached, the man ran out of a side door and scaled a fence in his escape. Was there a mob after him? In a statement, the Catholic Archdiocese said the accused has been banned from Santa Maria Gretti and all other wow. Archdiocese properties. The Archdiocese of Edmonton is grateful for the ongoing support of the Edmonton police, blah, blah, blah. In our own statement, police have made the decision not to release the suspect's name in order to avoid contributing to social media notoriety and encouraging copycat events. I think they're giving him too much credit. Yeah. As if that video was going to take off and get anything more than 70 views. How did he fuck up the filming of that unbelievable prank? He said he fucked it it. up. Yeah, he did. I watched it. He wasn't. You never saw him speaking. It was like they were showing the crowd and he was talking and saying this Danny Mullen and all that. So he fucked up the filming and he had multiple camera guys. He might as well upload it then because he's not even in frame doing any of this. How can they prove it? Right. I was going to say that I'm impressed with the foresight they had to a show up at the right time in the morning because God knows Marty McFly typically sleeps in until 2 p.m. Right. And then to use fake names. Yeah. Let's keep in mind, this guy's other content is him shotgunning beers on top of a car. And then coning from 11 years ago. Taking prank ideas from 11 years ago. Yeah. And all of his videos are 30 seconds long. (laughs) For him to get up early, go to a church, register under a fake name. And also, I'm not too deep into christian mythology but austin isn't it true that when you get baptized your life officially begins in the eyes of god i believe so um it's it's more like you're starting a new life like your sins of the past have been washed away and now you rise in new life we should both we should both get baptized down but as far as that (laughs) baby is concerned happy new life yeah what a way to kick it off. Do they have to <laughs> baptize it again because of that little impurity? <laughs> it was a fake penis. It's fine. Was I mean, it? God cre- yeah, he took out. He, he show- I have a picture, by the way, of him with the dildo. It's giant. It's Maybe like- he had the dildo at home and he's feeding everybody the fake penis story to save his ass. It's possible. And also, if that's a hate crime. I got to think that if we were operating up in Canada, we'd already be on death row. Oh, absolutely. They would have they would have castrated you. Screw Canada. Yeah, honestly, what the fuck, man? Poor Marty. We got to help him out, man. You think we know a good (laughs) we should get a good Canadian lawyer and really make a fuss about this up there. We should get up there and talk him into letting me represent him in court. (laughs) (laughs) I'll do it. The only cri- <laughs> the would- only qualification is my dad is a judge. Yeah, that's true. And we'd uh, we the, there would have to be an ex- we would have to have cameras in court. I don't know if Canada has that rule that here the, in the United States I'm ble- I'm pretty sure you can't have cameras in most courts, especially. But uh, in Canada we'd have to we'd have to roll camera on that. Obviously, we'll figure it out. I just mentioned that if we lived in Canada and we did what we did, mm. we would probably get the death penalty. Yeah, Leo, I was talking to Austin about this earlier. We unknowingly almost got the death penalty in a video we filmed this summer. Really? What? Which one's that? What do you mean? What do we do? Something we did was so much more dangerous than I think anybody gave us credit for. Compton? Yes. Look at this article I read. Dude, the guy, what do you, dude, what do you mean? The Uber guy, I wasn't comfortable there. I was upset at you. That was the only time I was like, this motherfucker's going to get us killed. Let me read this right now. Because I read this in the L.A. Times. The L.A. Times is liberal to the point of basically being a propaganda rag. Yeah. I have picked it up around the start of the George Floyd riots. The front page article was encouraging the riots. Or maybe it was the front, the front page of opinion. Yeah, it's, it's owned by a Chinese man, too. You know that, right? I did not know mm-hmm. that. That would make me think it would be more conservative because, you know, Chinese business interests, they don't want AOC coming. I wonder if me and that guy both own soybean together. <laughs> Whenever I think of Chinese businessmen, I just think of guys in Hong Kong that just have 
like $30 billion right, yeah. washed in the American economy in right. real estate and gold and right. stock and a lot of soybeans too. Yeah, soybeans but for sure. Let me fucking read this article because this is the first time I've seen the LA Times acknowledge the defund the police was fucking stupid. Wow. It amazes me. I saw so many girls around the time of George Floyd who were girls I went to college with or girls, don't ask me why I follow them, who are still in college, mm -hmm. who posted, <laughs> look at the LAPD budget. It's more than the LA County Museum Fund and the Parks and Recreation budget. That's bad. We got to bring down, fuck the LAPD. Fuck 12. Yeah, defund the police. Let me read you this. Homicide surge, oh, mostly yeah. in South Central L.A. Oh, my God. A black minister down in Compton is quoted as saying, murder is at its highest in a decade in minority communities. And we're hearing about cuts. How can that be? That's the extracted quote. Black leaders down there are angry at privileged white shitheads pressuring the police because we obviously have these spineless mayors and governors in this state just if enough fucking feminist chicks who went to uc santa cruz tweet mean things at them they'll just do oh, 150 million dollars slashed out of the lapb pd budget meanwhile on the ground black people and hispanics like el diablo yeah r.i.p are dying in droves. Let me read some of this. I just screenshotted some of the article and I might have cut some of it off. Citywide, homicides are up 30% from last year and shootings are up 34%. Jesus. And a huge portion of the violence is playing out in South LA and Central LA with, mo with more than half the violence occurring in Southeast and 77th Street areas of LA. Okay. Moore said he was extremely concerned about the potential for more than 350 layoffs as the city seeks to protect I'm reading words that aren't there as the city seeks to close a projected six hundred and fifty million dollar budget shortfall this year oh, and God. the impact that will have that this will have on the department's ability to deter violent crime. Oh, my God. I only have like half of this article screenshotted. But the point is, I read another article. This was one from earlier in December, and I just went, read one yesterday that says basically dudes are walking around with shooters on their hips like mm -hmm. it's the wild west in the 1800s yep. there no the cops are afraid to stop anybody they're basically forced to sit in the station with their hands folded in their laps right and so therefore dudes are just walking around blasting fools oh my god dude trust me i when the uber driver was the one that really was like that scared me when he was like man no don't do this like he was basically telling us we had no shot that night i mean i i feel like we got lucky i feel like the guy that circled us in the bike that was not in the video that was the guy that alerted some other guys, but those guys were maybe like, you know, hey, man, we already popped a few this week, man. We ain't got to go over there right now, man. They look like they're rich. And then the guy was probably like was thinking about survival, Chad. And he was like, nah, man, it looked like some bums and shit. Yeah, kinda. we did look like bums. Yeah. And it's in retrospect, we should have done up Leo in blackface <laughs> and just had you be Dante Culpepper the whole time. I think that would have kept us nice, nice and safe. I think it was your your tactical vest was scaring people away. That was good too. They probably assumed I was an Eric Harris school shooter <laughs> type. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you kind of did look like a school shooter for sure. Oh, and then we had an actual like complete full sh school shooter look and kind of guy in Austin. What if we had done Leo up in some black shoe polish? Well, we would have died. Okay, no, and no, I would no, have been no. canceled even <laughs> harder than the first time. All right. I would have just been like, all right, this is my only job is I guess I'm Danny's assistant. I can't even be in the videos. Speaking of Leo sent me a link to a TikTok clip that went viral this oh, last week. Yeah. Last podcast. It was our first one back in the new year. A little oh. rusty. <laughs> At some point, it wasn't the 45 minute mark, the 50 minute mark. Yeah. I ran out of things to say. <laughs> and so I just went on this hate tirade yes. against not even fat women. No, just the. the Bottom half. The bottom half of fat the women. The bottom half. I stand by it. Yes. What's it called? What's the nickname for a fat pussy? Fupa. A fupa. Fat upper pussy it's, area. No. It's when the vagina looks like Kelly Slater riding a wave. Oh. But instead of riding a wave, it's riding a roll of fat. Oh. Imagine fucking a fupa. Stop it, dude. You could probably grab a handful of it like a fleshlight and just fuck it. Stop. Six inches away from the woman's body. If you were single, that could have been like something you, something you and Adam Fu could strive to do. Like, let's double team a Fupa. <laughs> <laughs>
one guy gets the pussy and the other guy gets a fat roll. <laughs> that rant I went on got picked out and isolated oh, yeah. on some TikTok account oh, yeah. called the best of podcasting. Yeah. And I'm very proud because he steals, I'll say it, clips from Tom Segura, yep. Joe Rogan, all the top podcasters. Mm -hmm. And by far the most viewed clip on there was me and Leo, yep. mostly me. It's mostly Danny, yeah. Talking about bringing back a second reign of terror oh, yeah. and using a guillotine to cut fat women in half <laughs> so we can get rid of the worthless lower part. And, and if you read the comments, I, a, a fan said it's about 80% positive towards, uh, I think it definitely got some traffic to the pod. So it's good. I speak what's on the mind of America. It's well, good. We needed a bang that first podcast back, you know? When I saw it, it had about 100, maybe 70,000 It had views. over a half million when I saw it. It's probably wow. going to get taken yeah. down. Dude. Oh, yeah, really? Over a half million when I saw it. It got oh. taken down? That's what I heard. Probably, Someone, yeah. Somebody said it got taken down. It's, of course, but it did the job. It, <laughs> it did its job, you know? It was probably Ben. He probably was working at TikTok there. He saw it. He's well, like, oh, fucking. He got laid off, so I don't think he has that power oh, anymore. Oh, there we go. Oh, shit. He didn't, we never, nobody even knew. We never were supposed to talk about where he worked, but I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Well, now he's laid off, and I don't <laughs> think he minds if a million Danny Mullen fans send hate mail. But yeah, <laughs> just to recap, guys, if you were curious yeah. why I despise the bottom half of fat women so... Mm -hmm. It's because the only redeeming quality in a fat girl is her mouth and titties. Oh, you bastard. The, the, the spider-veined elephant calves hmm. don't need those. The fupa that we already spoke about, get it out of here. The ass that looks like oatmeal oh, condensed God. in a pair of oh. barely fitting jeans. Oh, that is the cellulite you're comparing. Oh, it's yeah. oatmeal. Yeah, it yes. looks it looks like Accurate. if you got a pair of size 45 jeans, they'd have to be men's sizes. I don't know yeah. women's and you just fill them with hot oatmeal. That's what the bottom half of a fat woman looks like. I think that there's probably a lot of black gentlemen and poor white guys mm -hmm. who would disagree with you because the bottom it. half of a fat chick is probably their favorite part. Well, it depends on her muscle prior to her being getting to the obese stages. I mean, if she was like a gymnast or a volleyball player and then she became very obese, she could have a little muscle that keeps the fat kind of up there. You what know are you what talking I mean? about, Leo? Well, Can you, you know, speak about this from experience? You fucked yeah. fat girls that used to be gymnasts and ones that no, used to just play just, video games? I think that some, like some fat girls' asses are held up a little bit better by the, <laughs> the muscle. I'm sure we've all noticed that. I mean, for example, let's be honest. Black women's, when they're really obese, their asses can still, they're up there, you know what I mean? But like those Walmart white trash fat women, their asses are all the way down there. Mm. I've noticed the difference. There are, there are different fat asses. There really is. Black people get so blessed with body parts. Unbelievable. Because it's so true. The bl black men, we all know, big penises, or even if they're just more average, or even if they got a small dick, you know the black dudes have big asses, yep. which women love. Yeah. And then black chicks, fat asses and fat titties almost always. Yep. Or at the very least, a really nice pair of thighs. Yeah. But I have noticed a kind of division. Mm -hmm. in it's, It seems to be binary. It's like a black girl is either stacked and looks like an Olympic gymnast, or she looks like Aunt Jemima. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be much of a middle ground. I see what you're saying. I mean, well, yeah, I guess it just depends on that athletic, uh, you know, prowess. Like, was she out? You know, it depends on what she did in high school, I suppose. Black men, too. They either look like they should be playing wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, mm -hmm. or they look like they have stage three diabetes. <laughs> Their parents like to cook a lot of food. They do eat. They eat a lot. Yeah, they eat a lot of fried food. I feel like their uh, their diet can. Um, it can, it's also high in protein. I mean, it's it's good and bad. Let's think about it though, because for me, a perfect between point between wide receiver for the Ravens and guy with stage three diabetes. I don't even know if diabetes comes in stages. I'm talking about mm -hmm. my ass. Is Fan Jerry? Yeah, Fan Jerry is fat, but he's not obese. True. Do we know a black guy who has the similar build to Fan Jerry? Hmm, no. Fan Jerry is still fixable. Fan, Fan Jerry, Jerry is beyond fixable. He's got some stretch marks, but he, they won't look that bad yet. Okay. If they grow a little bit more, they're going to start looking kind of bad. Let me tell you, I've spent two January videos trying to get Fan Jerry onto the path of fitness, and I mm -hmm. failed miserably each mm -hmm. time. In 2019, I got personal trainer Mo to run him up and down the beach. In 2020, I took him to the dojo to learn some jujitsu. Mm -hmm. 
in 2021, you're going to really tell him that the habit that he has of the cocaine use is okay. And maybe that'll get him to the point where he becomes thin. Or I'm going to take him to a liposuction clinic. Oh, my God. Sex appeal is more important than ever. And we've got a oh fat ass who cannot shed the pounds in our crew. Wait, that's really funny. Wait, how much is a lipo session? Maybe we could do that for a video. That's classic. Need I remind you, Leo? I own soybeans. No, you're good then. I can pay for whatever, for whomever I want to pay for. We should have a team colonoscopy video then where everyone gets a colonoscopy. Way ahead of you. What? But more importantly, Fanjerry needs liposuction. It yeah, would that's cost classic. about eight to ten thousand dollars to get Fanjerry lipo. Really? And the shame was How do you know that? Uh my oldest sister had it done a while back and now she lost. Is she the one who hit me up on Instagram? She's the one that yeah. hit him up. Oh, of course. That all makes sense now. All right. Well, it looks like I got to move on to the younger sister. I think she <laughs> follows me on Instagram, too. <laughs> hey, you think you're going to get that haircut? I need one, too, man. We should both do a dual haircut that day. Should we like 200 it. bucks. Would love it. Get her in here. How many months do you think it would take for Fan Jerry to pack on every last gram that he lost from liposuction, though? I think four I, months. You think four months? So this yes. is this is the second video is when he makes it back up. I think, I don't know, is he a kid? I heard that if you're a little too fat, though, lipo doesn't work because it's around the organs the fat you think he's at that point where it's kind of i think it might be around his organs a little bit why do i get the sense that everything leo learns about any topic is second hand through some girl who just got done sucking his cock it was life. not from a girl you it know, was from I joel heard, i heard some fat girls can't get lipo because of organs oh you're such a bastard leo, no just, it was oh, yeah, joel that's very interesting i was a young man once in, and i was selling appliances and then was a fat fuck he was 6'4 350 pounds his name was joel he was actually probably closer to 400 pounds that's the guy that armin i always tell the story it but, is a good story yeah armin one time he, this guy joel he was a very, Armin is Leo's ex-Armenian co-worker. Yes. Who was a scumbag, and Leo has a comedy bit about him. I do. And he once... Look, okay, so Joel came over and was kind of lecturing on how you can't give free delivery for these dishwashers because it's free delivery with a rebate. So you have to charge it and then give them the rebate for him. Joel was a stickler. He was very. And Armin would say whatever he needed to say to make a sale. Absolutely anything he needed to say to make a sale, including this lying all the time. But so this time he was sitting, there was, a, there was a woman and a man waiting to buy this dishwasher. He turns right in front of him, looks at Joel, and he goes, Oh, okay, Joel. How about you lose some weight so if you fall to the ground, we can pick you up to take you to the hospital? <laughs> and Joel turned around. I was just trying not to laugh. But Joel turns around and walks away. He leaves him alone for the rest of the day. But Armin got that sale and he gave him the free delivery like he usually did. My favorite thing that Armin did, would do, though, is like on sale days, it would, it would say like 30% off Friday, Saturday, Sunday with the dates. And he would be like, Yes, uh, we have the sale, but tomorrow it's going to be gone. And they'd be like, but it's the sign says Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He'd be like, who are you going to believe? Me <laughs> or sign? <laughs> and it would work. Did he, did he really say me or sign? Or did he say me or the sign? No, he me or sign, dude. And are you just subtracting the word mm -hmm. the for a comedic effect? No, 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 no. He, that Armin was the, he, he had the he strongest broken, accent. Broken, yeah, it was Armenian. broken Armenian. <laughs> and he, and there were enough Armenian customers coming in in Burbank that he he also, probably 50% of his sales were Armenians. Good. Because they would come in and they'd be like, this is, if they saw me, they would just come up to me and they'd go, Armenian. And I'd be like, Armin. Yeah, like they would not speak they wouldn't even they didn't even know how to speak english so the reason he would do that is because in sales you learn that time kills all deals yeah your chances of getting somebody to slap down their credit card give you the expiration date and for those funds to get processed it is so much higher if you keep them in the building and you keep talking to mm -hmm. them whereas if they go home they talk to their wife they think it over oh you are sunk an armenian this guy despite his language deficiencies oh, yeah. understood that mm -hmm. And also, I was just thinking, you tell me about this Armenian, about what an insane phenomenon the band System of a Down was. A yeah. rock band composed entirely of Armenians. They went in to Grand High School. Yeah, they were, they were there before I was, uh, you know, they're older than me. They're, I think they're in their 40s, right? In 40s or but 50s. But they were, when I was in high school, they were still like the talk of the town. Everybody was like, oh, yeah, System of a Down came in. They went here. If you don't like System of a Down, come over to my house. <laughs> I'll give you my grandfather's antique bayonet oh, God. that he used in the Pacific. Oh, God. And you can stick it into your gut. 
You'd have to use the your toe to pull the trigger, probably. No, 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 no. The, the bayonet. Oh, just oh, you the bayonet, the, the fucking knife. Part. They're not oh, going to be able to take the Hemingway out. They're oh. going to take this. What's it called when you kill yourself with a fucking knife? Hobuki wookie. Yeah, in the, the stomach. Uh, the Japanese. I feel like uh, Austin Se- would know Sepiku. this. Thank. I was yes, close. Yeah, I knew it. We knew it. I knew there were a lot of U's. Sethiku. Sepiku. Sepiku. God, that must be painful, huh? System of a Down. Fucking rocks. They're great, man. And you know what's crazy about that band? Austin will find this interesting. The drummer is an aggressive conservative. Hmm. Aggressive. He used to go on Loveline all the time is why I love him. Because Loveline is one of my favorite radio shows. It was great. And by the way, this weekend I made a pilgrimage to the studio they recorded it at. Oh, wow. Westwood One. I went there. I parked outside the door. And I just let the energy of decades, rather one decade of radio genius just waft out the windows. And I tried to soak it up for this episode. I, wow. wanted, I wanted a little bit of that Adam Carolla in his prime, Dr. Drew on mic number Why two. Why don't they rehash that? They both could use it. They still though. do a podcast together. Oh, okay. But the drummer from System of a Down used to always call into that show and they'd be like, what's up? It's John from System of a Down. How's it going, John? And he would just report in on what porn he'd been jerking off to. <laughs> That was the attachment him and Adam had was about porn. Uh And then I guess he listened to the show long enough. Adam's conservative politics rubbed off on him. And so now if you go to his Instagram, it's like, what do socialism and prison have in common? Everybody wears the same outfit. Everybody makes the same income. Everybody eats the same thing. There's no progression. It's that kind of meme is what he's got Mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. And then him and Serge, who's a socialist. And if you've listened to the lyrics of System of a Down, they're all very anti-establishment. They got in a Twitter war a little while ago. You should look this up, Austin. It's brief enough that you could read it. We'll keep talking, but let us know when you've pulled it up. It's John from or just System of a Down politics Twitter war. That's Armin, all you need. Armin's a big conservative. It, it is a thing. Armenians love Trump. They loved him until like he didn't. He wasn't as supportive as he should as he should have been for their taste against the tur- this whole Turkey debacle that happened. But some of them still love him. It it is funny that the Armenians are conservatives though. I guess it makes sense a little bit. They like to they like to fuck around with the system. They love God. They do love God. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. That helps. They're big mm-hmm. into God. I don't know much else about Armenians. I remember that Ronda Rousey used to have this coach named Edmund, Mm -hmm. and he became notorious because ever since she started training with him, she got knocked the fuck out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. He's from he's in Glendale. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, She'd come hopping out with her hands in her titties. Right. Then comes bam, Amanda Nunes, yeah. left hook, straight right, right, left hook, uppercut, unconscious. Yeah, no head movement, no nothing. Travis Brown, a heavyweight UFC fighter who mm-hmm. was fucking and then married Ronda Rousey, he started training at Edmonds Gym. Oh God, the Armenian guy. He went out. His next seven fights, hands at his nipples, waited out into the middle of the ring. His opponent said, "Jab, <laughs> right uppercut, left hook, straight right." And then Travis Brown lost seven in a row. Jesus, he's the worst trainer in the. He's the most notorious trainer Bad in the history trainer. of MMA. There's a uh, in boxing. I guess that would. There's there's numerous that are just like go out there and trade but there are some legendary ones there was one uh goosen who like he was responsible for one of the greatest fights you'll ever see but it was crazy that he was telling this guy to exchange after he had been knocked down four times and he had knocked down the other guy three times but then he knocked him out when he knocked him down the fourth time but it's like a crazy round sometimes we'll have to watch it sometime it's insane it's it sounds... knocked down twice and then he gets up and he goes over to his trainer like wobbles barely the guy puts his mouthpiece in and he goes come on go out there and show him what you got you know instead of like hold on like get back in you know get back to the corner didn't give a shit about the guy i guess but it was the craziest fight in this round sounds like the trainer who gave freddie roach parkinson's yeah i've dude. been reading about freddie roach freddie was a catcher bro he would he would just wear it in the face all that day. they call those catchers they call in boxing that's a term for guys that just get they brawl and they don't have defense a catcher what do they call the guys who get fucked in the ass well those guys are just faggots <laughs> that is the boxing lingo kids that's the now boxing you lingo. know in boxing there was a famous gay uh a gay boxer email griffith who uh a guy was uh, accusing him of being gay like in the 60s and he killed him in the ring actually he killed the other guy because he the was gay really gay man killed yeah. the guy who was accusing him yes he was really gay did he use his fists or did he pull a revolver from no, his, he was his fist man in the fight he, he was fighting penis. the guy and mm. there were rumors about AIDS him being gay him. <laughs> i guess in, in all those sports like in you never thought there was a gay guy in your gym at jujitsu there was an open gay guy Ooh. in our gym at jujitsu and i know it seems bigoted 
but it was San Francisco and he was covered in tattoos and he worked at a tattoo shop. And part of me, I rolled with him all the time, was super nice to him. Mm -hmm. But part of me the whole time, this is uh, the part of my brain that I'm not always so proud of. You know, the part of you that's like latently racist yeah, or sexist. I guess my sexism isn't too latent. It's pretty obvious on here. But <laughs> every time I rolled them, I was just like, oh, please don't. Last weekend, I hope you didn't get on a tugboat at some point. And I hope it wasn't rented out for a gay orgy oh, of all blue God. collar San Francisco guys. Oh. Because he looked like the sort of guy who would go to anonymous working class gay men's apartments and engage in, as they call it, rough trade oh. which is a nice term for getting the shit beat out of you and fucked anonymously sans condom up the ass mm. and i was always a little afraid like what if this guy has something but then it got out that he had a lifelong husband and they were oh. monogamous wow and i had no qualms about rolling you with asshole him. see but never i was always judge scared. a book by its cover folks never and also gay guys, I mean, I think there is a pill now where they can take and you don't get AIDS. I heard that's a thing. My mom was complaining about that, too, about how glorious the ads made it seem. Because mm. my mom is in some ways like a crotchety old conservative paranoid. She's, woman. Yeah, she seems conservative, but at the same time, she's like super, you know, a special ed teacher. So she's like has that kindness that she you, tolerates that you the lack, tards. Yeah, you I lack. don't. And today that's there is going to be there's, 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 there's going to be a little bit of a handicap theme today. My mom always mm -hmm. tried to tell me growing up, Danny. Just because they have a mental defect, oh God. just because they have Down syndrome, mm -hmm. does not mean you can take them behind the backstop and urinate on them at recess. You bastard. And I said, Mom, <laughs> I said, Mom, how else are they going to know they're inferior to me and my classmates? <laughs> and she said, Listen. Daddy, just because, just because they get lower scores in their tests in every subject, including oh, physical education God. does not mean you can empty your bladder mm. on their sneakers behind the kickball dugout. And I said, mom, mm -hmm. but I really want to. <laughs> oh my God. Your and mom is a saint. I'll tell you. That was also completely fictionalized people. I want you to know. He and never urinated on any people with mental disabilities or anybody with a physical handicap. I hope there was this kid, JP, who was retarded in my Third, I went to a school that was first grade through third grade, mm -hmm. and it was very a very good school. I, I commuted to a rich part of town, and he got the best special education treatment. The teachers all babied the shit out of him, mm -hmm. and I remember I was jealous of this motherfucker because I wanted that attention. Oh yeah, they do get a lot of attention. He got for sure. The, the lunch ladies gave him the best shit always. Wow, JP was a fucking bumbling fool, <laughs> and I was the only one who knew. What did what was his mental disability? Would he had say? Down syndrome. Oh, straight down. And he was down gigantic. Syndrome. Wow. He was did like guys, a guy from Mice and Men. Did you guys? Have, you and I just, <laughs> Lenny. I just drove through Salinas. You and I should definitely yes, do a Mice, a mice and, and Men. men. I'm Lenny, Salinas. dude. I'm Lenny. <laughs> the big <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, I gotta, that would be I gotta amazing. Pee. I gotta Go pee. pee I'm gonna text Marty. We heard about your unfortunate situation. We read an article, Marty. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, fuckers? Can you not hear us? <laughs> can you hear us? Oh, yeah. I can hear you guys. You just chose to ignore the first two things we said. Yeah. Marty, and for everybody listening to the podcast, we called Marty up while mm -hmm. I was peeing, and now he's here ready to talk about his hate crime. How do you feel, buddy? That's funny, buddy. Marty. Uh, I'll be truthful, man. I don't feel so good about <laughs> why why man why are you ashamed don't listen to the press we all know they're just haters <sighs> i was watching kind of fucked up <laughs> it's kind of fucked up nah, marty marty dude, did you really do did you really expose yourself to a recently baptized baby <laughs> no i did not <laughs> yeah let's deny that it wait, was wait. a dildo right so you're saying on record that what's the lady who wrote this article uh sarah let's get you know we need to yeah let's get her name up here because you know she she put it out there for everyone to see so here it is she looks like a nice lady sarah ryan of global news Marty McFly, you're saying right now on the record that Sarah Ryan, Ryan Global News is a liar. She is a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> how much of this article that I'm reading is true? Yeah, Marty? how much? Oh, oh. oh I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say no comment on that. But did you do you speak Italian, Marty? Is this a thing? You sound. Yes, I do, buddy. You I actually do speak. 
Italian. You speak Italian. You, wow. Marty, what do you go? Oh, oh. <laughs> you sound like an old stupid dog that's running from its owner and is holding a rolled up newspaper. <laughs> oh, I love it. Though. I love it. <laughs> Marty, your Canadian accent's amazing, though. Let's be honest. Fucking right it is, bud. So, so there, there, there is blasphemy. There are lies that are causing you a lot of drama. Are do you think you will serve any jail time? Seriously? Ah, uh, oh, I, I don't think so. To be truthful, but are you gonna have to pay a big fine? Like, what are you gonna do? Why don't you come out with an apology? <laughs> come he out already, with an apology video. Wait, he. Oh, he came out of the closet in December. That's what he, he did. He did. That's right. He did. You did come out of the closet. That was two episodes ago. We had him do. Hopefully, that, that helps. Marty, so yeah. <laughs> you don't think you're going to jail, as you, Leo just asked you. Right. Do you think that there's going to be a trial, or are you going to come before a judge? Oh, no. So, like, I do have a court date on March 17th. Well. Are you in the market <laughs> for a competent attorney? Am I in the market? I would say so, bud. <laughs> what if this attorney in question had a colossal stockpile of soybeans? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> what if he was just a good old investor and he had a lot of assets at his disposal? It can only be a good thing, Marty. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Would you be interested in this attorney? Ah, uh, Dan Shivers. That's who your attorney is? Yes. Is this guy... Not listen, anymore. Not anymore. Th- we need, you need a real swinging dick. Did You need a guy with experience talking to crowds. You need a guy with clout. You need a guy with followers. You need a guy that can help you, you know, f- in your future. You need Danny Mullen to represent you in court. Listen to this, Marty. <laughs> when I represent you on March the... 17th? 17th? I am going to step out in front of the jury in a full tuxedo, wearing a top hat, and I am going to do a magic trick. That's right. You know why I'm going to do a magic trick, Marty? Why? To mesmerize the jury. Because showmanship over substance. That's why. That's right. And you know what? I'll. This is what we'll also have. You know when he, Danny's going to have to put on a few presentations for the jury? On one of the presentations, I will make an appearance. I will have the dildo that you wore, that you exposed to that child, and I will be wearing it, and I will say, compare this to a real cock. Does this look real? You know, like, no one has a cock like this. If the dick don't fit, you must acquit. If the dick don't fit, you must acquit (laughs) Marty. Let's go. When they hear the echoes of Johnny Cochran ringing through that courtroom, they will know you are not a hateful person. That's right. Because Johnny Cochran was black. It's genius. That's right. That's right. Not only, (laughs) listen, I will have that dildo in court to show everyone Mm -hmm. that it was not, you didn't expose yourself. Sarah could be held accountable for her lies and blasphemy. And in the end, you're going to be she's going to have to write a rebuttal article and she's going to have to use your real name. And you're going to be the, the most famous Canadian of all time. You'll surpass everyone. Gosling, the fucking prime minister, or whatever you guys call them, the Nelk boys. You're going to be the most famous mm. Canadian. We- this is what you want. We do need to push for an official retraction. We do. Yeah. She needs to retract what she said. He didn't yeah. expose himself to a newly, and it was a newly baptized baby. She made sure to write that to make it worse. I will walk. You know what? If they don't retract it, I'm going to walk into this church during its next Sunday mass, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Seriously. <laughs> I'm not beholden to the Canadian court yeah, system. We're, we're not. Yeah, we'll flee. We'll flee the country. It'll be a race. The second part of the video will be us racing to the border to get the fuck out of town. Oh, it'll be great. It'll be a great video. It'll be a thriller. Hey, Marty. Yes, sir. I thought I heard you ask what magic trick I'm going to do for the jury. Did you yeah. ask that? I definitely did, but <laughs> I'm going to go up to the head jury. I'm not sure how you guys do it in Canada. I don't think you have a really good system up there, so it probably doesn't even work the same way. Yeah. But I'm going to walk up to the head juror, and I'm going to say, I'm going to have you think of a number between 1 and 10. <laughs> and he's going to he's gonna say a number aloud, Marty, and I'm going to have written that number down before I posed the question. Mm-hmm. And we're going to demonstrate it right now. Are you ready, Marty? Yes, sir. I'm going to hold up a number of fingers to the cameras in the podcast room. And then... I'm going to ask you which number between one and 10 you're thinking of, and you're going to say the number I'm holding up. You want to see this magic trick, Marty? I do, buddy. (laughs) 
Behold. Wait, wait. I'm wearing the completely wrong headwear. Oh, that's better. <laughs> now I can't hear you. Marty, talk. Uh, what's going on, bud? Behold, <laughs> Mr. Marty. <laughs> What number are you thinking of? One. God damn it! <laughs> All right, maybe I'm not the man to represent you in court. <laughs> Marty, but you know, if we represent you, we get you, you know, we're going to get you off. It's a guarantee, but you're going to have to do a little bit of a bit for us. Would you be willing to do a bit in court for us? In court. <laughs> I was holding up a seven, by the way, Marty. That was a seven. We were thinking, yes, Marty, like, this, is the, this is the bit that we were thinking about doing with you. Maybe... <laughs> You once again have a dildo in your pants and you once you expose yourself to the court. But this time it's a black dildo because I saw it. It was a flesh colored dildo. So if it's a black dildo, they'll know right off the bat. Oh, that's a fake penis. No reason to think that this is a, yeah. a real. Ex yeah, he's, this guy's not exposing himself. You know, would you do that in the court for us? Would I do that in the court for you guys? Yes. Oh, that's a tough one. Canadian court or U.S. court? Canadian court. Listen, why would Canadian you be in U.S. court, asshole? Marty, you're gonna even if you serve jail time for this hate crime. Let's say you do, right? <laughs> Once you get out, you're famous. Yeah, you're in the crew. If you do serve any jail time for this at all, you're definitely in the crew, right? But I mean, you won't be to, in the crew if you don't serve. Jail if you time. don't serve jail time, you're just gonna be a nice little a guy that once was really funny on the pod and did a really funny little bit on his in his Canadian in a Canadian church. But if you go to jail, buddy. Your life's going to change forever. Here's how we do it. Here's how we ensure he goes to jail. When I represent him in open court, I'm going to call him to the stand as a witness. Marty McFly, are you prepared to act as yes. a witness? I'll take that as a yes. He's going to be up on the stand. And then when I give him the signal, which is going to be holding up seven fingers, he is going to hop up on his stool Pull a bottle of Franzia, or rather a box of Franzia, yeah. out of his overlarge, cheap, rented mm -hmm. gentleman's warehouse suit. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Men's warehouse. Men's warehouse suit. Mm -hmm. And he is going to say, I will suck Danny Mullen's <laughs> cock, Leo Dottavio's cock, cock <laughs> Fan Jerry's cock, and Lenigi's cock, and Austin's cock. That's what you're going to say, Marty. Are you prepared to pull out the exact same shtick in court? <laughs> I am. <laughs> yes, dude. That'll be so postmodern. Oh my if god! If you commit the crime you're in court for, in court, in court, That'd it'll be, be art. Unreal. It'll be performance. It's double art. jeopardy, man. You can't even get in trouble for it. Leo knows the rules. Yeah. So Marty, you uh, uh, you think you'll have to read the, tr the transcript of what you said in court, or will your lawyer uh, have to read it, or will the uh, maybe the guy prosecuting will he have to read what you said in the in the church? Um, I'm deaf. Most than definite that everybody's gonna have to either read it or look at it. <laughs> Will you do us a favor and please either have your voice memos on in your phone or put your camera on in your phone and just record it so we'll know we can hear it because that would be the funniest <laughs> thing in the do. world. I think this is how it's gonna go. The judge is gonna be like, "You've been brought before the Royal Court of Canada for committing a hate crime on December the 13th. How do you plead?" Oh, you know, Mr. Judge, I think I'm like guilty. I mean, innocent. I mean, innocent. Listen, that's going to be the opening to the trial. <laughs> Marty, listen, but listen, good luck. I don't think I think you're going to be just fine. I'm sorry this happened to you. You could have ran, you know, you could have ran this bias, said if it was a good idea to do or something. I would have probably like, you know, leave the dildo at home. But either way. Good luck. We hope that you're, you're going to be all right. Hey, all right. One more thing, Marty. I heard you're planning on coming to my house and getting on the roof. Yeah, is that true? <laughs> Quite possibly. I was going to do it naked as fuck. <laughs> Marty, all jokes aside, if you come to my house, I sleep with a gun next to my bed. I will shoot you through the shingles. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear what sounds you. like Santa Claus creeping across the roof yeah. in January, you will get a hollow point 38 round in the bottom of your pelvis. But I will, Marty, hit me up uh, if Danny's busy, which is possible. He's very busy. I'll I'll uh, I'll do a little interview for my channel. We could see, we get to the bottom of everything that happened and we'll uh, we'll put you because you're you're pretty infamous on this podcast and the fans they want to see you on video so. 
You know, you didn't even fucking. Voice. Yeah. yeah, I got you. So hit me up when you're in town, kid. And, and Marty, this isn't a Definitely joke, dude. Definitely. I will beat the ever living shit out of you if you show up at my house. I'm not joking. Don't you dare. Just because we've kid around with you on the podcast, I told you we're gonna come to you or right. we're gonna fly you out. If you take it upon yourself to show up in my town and come to my house, yeah. there's going to be no diplomacy. I'm going to come out with my fists ready to go. And you're not going right. to win this fight. You out of shape, chain smoking, wine drinking, fake dick showing dummy. Motherfucking Martino, dude. You are a legend, though. You became a legend overnight with what you did. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> you might look back on it and regret it one day, but for now, it's okay. Our guest is here, by the way. Okay, later, Marty. And Marty, if you show up here, you're going to be hurt. I'm going to. I'm day. not we'll even joking. I will beat the fuck out of you if you show up in my don't house. Don't show up at Danny's house. You understand? I definitely won't, bud. All right. Have a good one, buddy. You too. All right, Derek. You want to go get our uh, Dennis? You want to go get our uh, get our guest? He's a little. Uh, oh, okay. Well, should we preface this this fan that's coming or this this? It's one of my patrons. He's a good kid named John. He has, he pitched something to the podcast and I presented to Danny and we did it. We, but, need, we need to get a mic set up for this guy. Yeah, right over here. So the thing is, <sighs> tell, uh, hey Dino, don't let him in yet. Yeah. Should we preface? Yeah, should, absolutely. Yeah. So the kid, he has a physical handicap. He has a smaller hand and arm. His right arm is smaller and his hand is smaller than his left kind of like the scary movie type thing and he said I, w I would love to go on the pod and let Danny rip me a new one for this hand I'm okay with it he also has a story apparently and a girl that he, we might call that got fisted with the little hand if that's not a guy that should be on the podcast I don't know who is imagine on what other radio show this would happen <laughs> because it's on Howard Stern, on Howard Stern, they go the whole shebang. Right. They bring in a black retarded midget like right. Beetlejuice. Right. They bring in a hooker who's going to gangbang 30 truckers. All right. We're just bringing in a guy who has a slight birth defect. He has in order a slight to birth defect. He's missing his right pectoral as well. Maybe we'll have him take his shirt off. But but on the other hand, like imagine Joe Rogan bringing on a guy just because he had a small <laughs> arm. No, we're bringing a guy with a small arm, and we're gonna we're gonna see what his life has been like up to this point. He's a smart kid. He gives me some good stock tips. And he's into the whole cryptocurrency. He seems smart. He's fast talking guy. I feel like he's on a, on Adderall. I mean, he might even be able to give us some Adderall. But good kid, you know, and he has a small arm and he's leaving back home to Florida tomorrow. So I said, sure, kid, come on the pod. I'm glad he's fisting. He fisted a girl with a small arm, with right? a small hand. Yeah. And he's going to and he's going to call. We're going to call her on the pod. I hope he keeps fisting instead of fucking because I don't want this guy in my gene pool. I care <laughs> about America. I can't. I don't want any freaks. You bastard. I care. He's a he's a good kid and a physical handicap is not going to hold him back. He wanted to, he when he wanted to get on the pod and he used his physical thing that's wrong with him as disabled disablement. I don't even know what to yep. say, how to say it. Yep, I got his you. His disability. He used his disability to further his life. Look at it. I mean, we've got Flipper Hand Jones coming in right Stop now. Stop it. We dude. had Airsoft Fatty who used his obesity. Yes. And we had Swolby who used his handicap in height. Yes. They've all got their own things. You're so, yeah, you called him a midget. You're so man. Uh, but yes, Flipper Hand John. <laughs> Flipper Hand Johnny, is that what you call him? I, I love how you can just always say the person's characteristic and then add Jones or Johnson to the end. Yeah, his name is John. Like so Horsecock Johnson, Ski Mask Jones. Ski, Mac this is Ski Flip, Mask Jones. How about dude. this is Flipper Hand Jordan? Flipper Hand Jordan. There we go. It. We'll see if he even has a flipper hand. But if he wants to talk about crypto, I'm going to yeah. set this bitch straight. Yeah, Tell yeah. him what the real commodity is. <laughs> oh, God. Soybeans, apparently. It's definitely soybeans, Leo. Did they fucking find them, dude? I want to see. Can I see your investment app? Uh, the one I have? Why? Yeah. With all my stuff? Yeah. In? Absolutely not. Why? You're afraid I'm going to say it loud on the podcast? Yeah, dude. No, I will not. No, you can't see that. Maybe one day in private when we're not. You know when what? I, I'm going to have to make you sign some stuff. I, I will know. say this, Leo. I've asked you twice over the course of a month, maybe. Mm -hmm. So pretty close. I asked you two separate times mm -hmm. and I asked you how much money you had invested in stocks. I haven't told you. No, no. You gave me two figures mm -hmm. and one was double the figure you gave me the first time. Well, I might have lied the first time because I, I'm uncomfortable with the with the uh, the number. Can I not say it? No, don't say it. It doubled. Which, yeah, I don't know if you're alive. I'll show it to you after the podcast today. I'll show it to you. Okay. 
you know what my advice is going to be after I see it? Oh, God. That I should invest in a commodity soybeans and get a storage unit. Oh, what are you paying for the storage unit now? I don't have to wear my top hat anymore because you understand. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. I don't have to posture as the Monopoly man. Good. You're finally talking some sense. That's right. All right, let's get Flipper Hand Johnson in here, Dino. You take his shoes off? Oh, you don't see him? I'll go look. Yeah, go look. We'll send a competent person to retrieve he's... him. Waiting, waiting for the deformed hand. You we are, are waiting. Such an... oh, we are waiting. God. Singing without a band. Oh, come when on. he comes in here Stop with it. his tiny appendage. I don't know what rhymes with appendage. You are a sick son Why aren't you helping bitch. me out? You're just trolling for pussy on Instagram. No, no, no. I'm making sure these fuckers have the right address, you know. We gotta, sometimes these fucking guys, you know. You're hanging me out to dry. There he is. Flip oh, with a bottle. Hey, take your shoes off. Nice, Austin. Yes. Shoes off. Austin. Jacket off. Probably shirt off. Let's do shirt off. What do you think? Let's see it because I want to see if the shrunken hand thing translates to his pectorals or his delts. Yes, let's do it. shirt off. It oh, does. John's a John's a big fan, by the way. Also, so yeah, go over the yeah. We go sit down, relax, put the earphones on. Lock in. Yeah, you can just scooch. That can scooch over. Yep, yep. What's your name, man? Jonathan. Okay, I'm gonna call you Hobbit Hand Hooch. <laughs> Hobbit Hand Hooch. I like it, dude. My fan John, dude. There we go. I just touched the small hand. Go touch the small hand. You, you have to also. There isn't enough. P oh. Touch the small hand. Nope. Touch the small hand. Touch Danny, it. touch the small hand. If somebody brings in some hand soap and some paper towels, I'll touch the hand. Hugh? Hand soap and paper What about towels. sanitizers? Does anybody you have sanitizer? You motherfucker. Oh, why do you think he's dirty? He's He keeps that thing cleaner than anything. It's been up a fucking girl's vagina. The right hand is the flipper hand. You're left-handed. Yeah taught myself to be actually oh there we go dude john he's, he's a fighter dude you can tell he's a fighter when you masturbate with your right hand i actually <laughs> don't have you when ever? you have yeah. does it feel like somebody else is jerking you off it just doesn't fucking work because i only can bend two uh two of the fucking fingers like my oh. thumb it's just like that i love it dude it's cute I think girls it is like it. And also, if you were a pedophile, you'd be set. Because whenever you look down and jerk off with your right hand, it'd be like a little baby's little giving you a hand that job. Is... <laughs> little fucking two-year-old. It's nice. So <laughs> what I want to hear about Hobbit Hand Hooch is when you fist at a college girl with oh, your nub. Let's hear about this. What do you want to hear about? I want to hear, you know what, better yet? I heard we have her phone number. She's willing to speak to us. We do. Yes. You're a good looking guy. He I, is I a good looking guy. Pussy. He gets pussy, dude. He's I do a good all right. Guy. Yeah. You're drinking a cold 45 40 at noon, and you don't do all right, I don't think, in general, but with women sometimes. No, I drunk. told him to get a little tipsy before the pot. I think it's a good, it was a good idea. Instructed by Leo. Okay. Yeah. Austin, do we have this phone call ready? This isn't a usual occurrence. I don't occurrence. have the number yet, yeah. but I'm as soon as I get it. Yeah. Uh, this isn't a usual occurrence. He's a big fan of the pod, so this is a big, right? You're, this is a big yeah. deal for you. He loves oh, it. I've seen every episode. Hell yeah, dude. I, dude John's a good man. Uh, can, can we get Elf Hand Ernie to hold up his flipper <laughs> for this camera right here? Can you guys <laughs> for the action cam? There it is. Wait, let me zoom out. <laughs> I love it, dude. <laughs> there we go. I just want to make sure you've got a pretty good physique. Do you lift weights? Oh my god! I can't believe you did yes, that right there, dude. Wow, that, that was, was a very compact space to do. Yeah, a that was. In. But you knew you've done that before. Well, he's got to compensate for having a small hand somehow. But he's jacked, dude. Yeah, he's got to fucking work. When you lift weights. I imagine you have to do only dumbbell exercises because uh, you can't handle a barbell. I can handle a barbell. Can you? Mm -hmm. I thought you couldn't handle your own penis. I do dumbbells for uh, chest exercises. I do uh. barbells for a lot of shit. I can bench dumbbells. Just harder. Kind of makes me uneven. Mm -hmm. It accentuates the unevenness even more. Mm -hmm. What's the meanest thing somebody's ever called you? I said I had one hand. Somebody said, you have one hand. That You're not going to fight me, pussy. You have one hand. Mm. You said you've punched someone with that hand, correct? I have dropped the kid who made that statement with that hand. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Are, are you at all angry at me for calling you Hobbit Hand Harry? Not in the slightest, okay. Danny. I appreciate it. So you're not, I don't have to worry about you coming over here and slugging me with the toes. <laughs> they look like toes. <laughs> such an asshole, dude. <laughs> it's not the it's first time I've heard that though. one. <laughs> Couldn't you see a girl being into it? 
No. That's why I cannot wait to get this woman on a the phone. A girl has never fucking cared about it, ever. No, of course not. Girls are way more compassionate than men. They will... They look past things. Especially, I think you... You come. Your family has some money, right? You you have a little cash there. Uh, yeah, they do okay. They do okay. He has a his dad has a sailboat, I believe. So they actually just sold the house and moved onto a sailboat full time. Okay. Wow. And I heard you have some ideas about newfangled investments like Bitcoin. Oh, God. And is that what you're invested in right now? Uh, not entirely, but I'm about seventy percent crypto with my investment portfolio. Probably. What else do you invest in, dummy? Uh, ETFs, uh, just long-term conservative stuff, he, some day trading stocks, some up, options. Yeah. I'm pretty diversified. What do you know about commodities? <laughs> what commodity are we speaking of, Danny? Soybeans. Damn. Fuck your soybeans. <laughs> corn oil. I don't want your fucking corn oil. <laughs> If you're not invested in the DBC index fund, from here on out, I don't want you listening to the podcast. Oh. DBC index fund. I'm not familiar with this one. <laughs> That's because you're a shrunken handed fool. God damn well, it. Well, dude. show me your due diligence. Uh, you want to see my you want to see my fucking soybean stuff? Yeah, fucking yeah, show it dude, to me, Danny. Let's go, dude. <laughs> Come over here. All right. What the fuck? I want to see this too. You have just a boxes of soybean? No, I'll show you. I'll show you my fucking Look at this. This no, is you're using the Apple stocks app. That's not. I'm no. not showing you my investments, but dude, oh. look at this shit. Look at the past what six the months. Fuck? This is soybean. It's all about soybeans. It's all about soybeans. Apparently. That fuck Wait, yeah, I got that. Fifty-two week low on it. Oh. Don't look when you look at the uh, all. It's it's clearly on a downward trajectory. It says it was, 14, but it's gonna pull up soon. It says fourteen sixty-two at close. What does and that the mean? The 52 week low is 1460, so it's pretty much as low as it has been all year. <laughs> oh, wait. It's also January 4th. Yeah, right. yeah, I, I guess it's. Get away. Yeah, 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 we gotta. You're breathing pure fumes. You are. You're hammered. I you love it. You smell like you've been drinking more than Colt 45. Colt no, 45, 45 and two zigzags. You can store soybeans and have them ferment for over a hundred years and it only gets better and makes better soy sauce. Seriously? I, I would believe that. I don't I don't know enough about soybeans. Soy sauce is just fermented soybean paste. It no, is that's so true. salty and good. <laughs> Why do you think sushi is so hot right now? It's hot. It's not the fish, it's not the rice, it's the soy sauce. That's right, baby. That's right. I fucking love it, dude. Let's get this girl on the phone. Let's do it. All right. Give me, uh, go All over right. there. I'll edit, uh, can you edit out the number? I, I have it memorized. I could just go type it in Yeah, for type him. it in for him, okay. man. See, John's fucked, dude. We should get him a job. I'm dude. really curious. Why do you have this girl's number memorized? It's my ex. Mm, and it's you like fisted her, her with the hand. <laughs> How many times did you do that? Three or four. Wow. <laughs> fisted her three or four times with the hand. It's a big cock it's if you look at the know. hand. Like, I see it as a risky behavior because once you start fucking a girl with your entire arm, mm -hmm. is the peener going to do the trick? Yeah, I mean, you ever you ever get a girl like super into anal? What do you think happens then? Like, does she not want vaginal sex? Is the is the what about no? I'm sorry, yeah, the opposite yeah. way. Do you ever get so into <laughs> anal that you don't like vaginal sex that much? Come on, it's man. happened to you, yeah. Absolutely, it's happened to you, yeah. Has that ruined a relationship for you? It hasn't I feel like it a could. relationship for me, but it's it's certainly not helping the cigar one right cigar now. guy. He's so into anal, I think it ruins every one of his relationships. Who? Cigar guy actually cigar guy. brought me here. Oh, he gave you a ride. Who, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Who the fuck is cigar? Cigar guy, guy is the guy that's been helping me shoot some of my videos. He's like patron. my camera. He's like my neeks, dude. I found him. He lives down the street. He's a good guy. I don't know. He could be a shady character, but he, he cool, was on dude. Austin's uh, live stream too. Came to the Hills House. He's a patron. Night. Seemed like a good guy. Cigar guy sounds like comic book guy. And what's the Hills House? Oh, he, he was, had an Airbnb. Dude, they were staying at a ten million dollar uh, house in in uh, Mulholland. Dude, it was crazy. I feel like there's some crew forming that I don't know about. No, Cigar know. guy. He came. Hobbit hand he, Hank. Was, he was helping me film that <laughs> day. Cigar guy's been a, a long time fan of your channel, and he was a patron of mine. He moved down the street from me, and he was like, oh, I want to help you film, man. So I was like, fine. And then he happens to be a pretty good camera guy. He knows, and he edits. He edited this last video I did. So, you know, he might have a gig with me. But we were hanging out that day, and I was like, why don't you just come meet another patron, John? Uh, they're both my patrons. And I was like, why don't you guys meet each other? So I took him up to the Mulholland house and, and he was, he drove What's me there. What's the Mulholland house? He was staying at, a, we we, they were Airbnb partying for New Year's. They were Drive. partying for New Year's and they, it was three grand a night for a house up in Mulholland. How so. old are you? 21. Leo? Uh-huh. I feel like you're spending too much time around young boys. Of course. And now my roommate's 19. It's, it's honestly getting out of hand. I feel like a father. Or a big brother, but you know it was you know I, it keeps me young. I got to stay on my toes, 
you know, it's I like being a big what do you brother. Mean you have to stay on your toes. And certainly means, not intellectually. There are a bunch of stupid heads. Well, yes, but it makes me want to be better. You know what I mean? No, I don't know. Well, none of them. They're all good kids. None of them smoke weed or drink much. So that's a good thing. That's a good part of it. Says about it. The, well, no, no, John. John it just, says you as he just polishes John off is, his cold 45. John, look, I am loyal to my patrons. If my patrons, uh, you know, I, I we FaceTime. He's on the, the the Ryan Gosling. So once a month we FaceTime or we do a Skype sesh. So, you know, we're, we're friends, you know, so I, I, he was in town in L.A. for New Year's. And he says, hey, I am staying at this big house. I was I had just done shot something with a uh, cigar guy. So I was like, you know what? Why don't we go? How old is cigar John? guy? He's 25. A little older. OK, so guy, you can appropriately call him that. I was going to say yeah, he yeah, should yeah. probably be called cigar child. I actually, maybe 26. OK, yeah. this I was worried about. There's a book I read one time called Less Than Zero. Mm-hmm. And there's a male prostitute ringleader guy mm-hmm. who just finds the young, attractive or in uh, Hobbit Hand Hank's case, the young misguided boys in Los Angeles and turns them into prostitutes. I see what you're saying. I, I should could, don't live in I Los could, Angeles. I could easily do that. I am kind of doing that because they all ask me about how you how do you how do you get a sugar mama and I'm like, well, first of all, you got to become a fantasy of one of the fantasies. And all of them so far they only have like the babysitter fantasy. So they got to stay young looking. <laughs> and then you go and you approach and you have to make them fall in love and then you have to make them sure you mention that you're broke all the time. Hmm. You got to demand a cut, Leo. Oh, of course. What do you mean? It's thirty percent because that's what the that's what Dirty Dom charges thirty seven percent for the uh, the OnlyFans. So I figured I should I go about thirty percent. Mm, I think twenty five. No, I haven't been hanging out with Dirty Dom. Shut your mouth over he there. He said Hank. that on the pod. I haven't been hanging out with Dirty Dom. Okay. Well, it just I'm, it seems like your network of young boys is just growing cool. and growing. I and just I got a camera if, guy. If and Dirty and Dom had young friends, you were uh, hanging out no, with no. too. No. What man. happened to Philippe? Uh, good old Philippe. Well, he's so busy. He doesn't want. He can't really film for me enough. So okay. I had to get a new camera guy. Okay. He's actually becoming a successful YouTuber to his Brazilian audience. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got thirty thousand, but he's got a couple videos over five hundred k. Philippe. So he's working hard, man. A Brazilian audience is valuable because oh, yeah. those girls they fuck and they've got a lot of plastic surgery. Yeah, there we go. That's a valuable. One. My grandpa always told me the Brazilian girls would break your dick wow. because they have huge asses or because they're just heavy. Because they have huge asses. Mm. <laughs> Break your Holocaust pain. survivor grandpa. How would he know? He's done extensive traveling to Brazil. Okay. Well, I know also a lot of Jews fled Germany. Or was it the Nazis that fled Germany to South America? They went to the, the, the Nazis. The Nazis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or they went to Argentina. They went to Argentina. They went to mainly, various yeah. places, I think. You yeah, think some of them were in Peru. Mm, yeah. Perhaps. Colombia, too. But Argen- a lot in Argentina, it's true. We are known there to are towns them. there that just is, have Nazis now. Yeah, it's true. Me and my friends, have, since I was a child, have dreamed of traveling going to Argentina, to Argentina to meeting to all find the Nazis. The Jew gold. <laughs> the Jew. <laughs> like the Nazis brought the Jew gold to Argentina and hid it there. Why? Do you, wow. You all say, right, Austin. You he's say, stealing from the Jews. You yeah, say no, Jew he, gold he as if there was just this treasure tre- chest labeled Jew gold that's down there buried beneath an X. That's what I, I don't think it's that simple. So what? The Nazis took their trinket, their gold trinkets and shekels and they they just took them from them like i don't know Shackled. that story well i mean the jews were kind of seen as like the bourgeois in a way that like i mean after they took all the jews and killed them they stole all their money mm. my understanding and this is from a jew's perspective who lost like probably 400 family members in the holocaust wow. if you go back far enough uh they were just kind of it was someone who came up and blamed them for wait, 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 wait. Yeah, they were just blamed wait, for wait, wait, a bunch of problems. Yeah, I know how the Holocaust yeah. happened. I'm not completely ignorant. Yeah. But 400 family members? You yeah. act like for to lose 400 family members, the Holocaust from, would have had to be a century-long occurrence. I'm, I'm from actually a very high rabbinical family that was huge. Dude, that, that makes sense. And they, they got they, wiped they, out. They can't use condoms. They just fucking four hundred of them. Like eight kids, ten kids. Everybody has like so many kids. So they were very conservative. This massive family you mm-hmm. came from. Yes, they were going out with the earlocks. Mm-hmm. Not even the yarmulkes. The pointy yeah, no. witch ass. They didn't touch women. Right. They d- they sit separately from women at synagogue mm-hmm. with a divider. Mm-hmm. Wow. It didn't work out so no, well. My parents weren't like that. Their parents' parents were. Hmm. Great. All right. Let's call this girl. All right, let's do it. You ready, Austin? Should be ringing right now. She's going to go by Ashley. Ashley. It's not a real name, but... I understand. No. It's okay. We'll get her on here. We'll talk to Ashley. You might be able to redeem yourself right here, Hank. All right. I don't know how. Hello? How's it going, baby? 
Hi, how are you? This is Danny Mullen calling you. Do you watch much YouTube? <laughs> no. Really? Yeah I've, yeah, I've never heard of you. Sorry. It's okay. You sound cute, though. So I, my interest is peaked. What do you do for a living? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a barista. Ooh, you're working your way through school, though, right? Yeah, wait, who are you? I'm Danny Mullen. You should look me up on Instagram right now. You're on a podcast, Ashley. Thank you. Ashley, do you have your phone handy? <laughs> I mean, what the hell do you think you're calling me on? Well, I forgot. Put it on speaker and then uh, maybe go go to the, the, the uh, Safari. I'm sure you have an Matt. iPhone. Danny Mullen. Why did I for a, su a suddenly go to the think Instagram. it was 2002 when there was a house phone next to her PC? <laughs> Ashley, just go to Instagram and follow me, Danny Mullen. Danny Mullen. And I want I'm you. Tell me that. Of I'm course. You. Of course I'm going to. And then you, you might have a few fans uh, to have. <laughs> I wouldn't want. I don't even know if you should follow him, but maybe send a DM so we know what you look like. Yeah. Uh, but if you follow him. This is about him, John. Yeah, this is about John. Of course, John is here with us. John, say hi. Hi. Wait. No, 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 no. You shut your mouth. I don't want him talking to her. D Danny, why don't you... S you know what? I Ashley, I don't want to say this, but Danny's been saying really... I mean, he's he's called... <laughs> he's called John a few different nicknames. Would you like to hear him? Sure, I'd love it. All right. What was the first one, Danny? Ashley, I first want you to add me on Instagram, so at the very <laughs> least, I can screenshot some of your photos and masturbate to them. <laughs> All right. I'll do that later. How old are you, by the way? I'm 20. You promise you're going to follow me? Sure. Later, after this podcast. I called him Hobbit Hand Hank. Nice. I called him Flipper Hand Phil. Does it make you feel better making fun of disabled people? Oh, if you would fuck! Heard, you really got to call me disabled. If you, he's you not bitch. disabled. You bitch. <laughs> and also, does it make you feel better fucking disabled people? Honey? Oh God! Stop it! Oh, this is great radio, guys. I have to be the, the I'm the middle guy here. This is great radio. But Ashley, we have a and you know you're going to be anonymous, obviously. We wanted to ask you about a little experience you had with with good looking John over here. All right. Nice, Leo. Right. Is Nobody it, has called him that prior to Leo saying it right now. John. Dude, good looking John. You good actually mentioned kid. it. Rewind. It's true. You did say he was God good looking. damn it. You did. Um, Ashley, um, can you explain the first time that he he fisted you with the small hand? What was it like? Why did you do it? And how did it feel? Um. Well, we were like hooking up for a while yeah. and... I was kind of drunk and so is he hmm. and it kind of just happened I don't know it's so small it doesn't really it's <laughs> his penis really or his like, hand it's not much so it didn't it didn't really it was, almost it was, it was up the anus as well no so. it wasn't are you serious I mean yeah really it's like not like his hand is much bigger than his dick put that hand up put that hand up you're a fucking champion he put that little thing up someone's ass that thing is way bigger than a common dick what does that say about his penis? You have a big by, penis. By girth. By girth. By girth. Yeah. I think she was so drunk at the time, she doesn't have a realistic memory of what it actually felt like. Because that's a big thing to go up somebody's ass. Not to mention yeah. all the funguses that are no doubt lurking between the fingers. Well, your anus is... I yeah, wash and scrub my hands, Dan. He wants Thank you he very much. He's got good hygiene for sure. Why didn't it work out between you guys? I feel like that the moment his hand inserted into your anus, I feel like that was a, a thing that would bond you two forever. Why aren't you guys together? I mean, we're still friends. That's good. When's the last time you guys had sex? Don't fucking lie. December 25th. Oh, so recently. On Christmas Deformed people aren't supposed to fuck on Jesus Christmas. Christ. It's ungodly. Christ. You motherfucker. It's in the book of Leviticus. Uh, it is. That is Apple not in the book of Leviticus. That is not true. Wait, did he? Use, does he pretty much always use his little hand at in some sexual way every time you guys have sex now? Because it's a thing. Like, did it open some portal for you guys? Is that the only way you can come? No, um, she comes no. plenty of times. I will, wow. I will be honest with you, no. I mean, okay. it would be great content if so, but no. Right, but no, okay, okay. Ashley, is there going to come a day when you marry another man 
and clasping his hands over a candlelight dinner, you tell him you got a deformed dwarf hand shoved up your gaping asshole. Well, I mean, I might not marry a man. I'm also gay, so... Oh, well... Bisexual. And a woman wouldn't care because they're much more advanced than us. They wouldn't even fucking care. A woman would be like, oh, that's great, honey. Let's invite him over to dinner. I'm just experienced. Do you have tattoos? I have a a a good resume. Okay. She's got a good resume. She she seems she's a barista. All I like Starbucks employees. I think they're all really up, you know, upper echelon intelligent human beings. I think they their job is high paced. I am a fan. Okay, listen I don't to me, honey. Starbucks. Listen, oh, okay. Well, listen either to me, way, you work at a coffee shop. I love it. Ashley, if you're going to be lesbian, be lesbian. If you're going to be straight, be straight. I suspect you're straight right now and you're just doing the lesbian thing so that you're the cool, hip, unrestricted girl on campus. It's possible. But 10 years down the road, licking carpet one night, getting deformed limbs shoved up your ass the next, <laughs> it's not going to lead to good things. You need to settle down. You need to focus on a craft. You can't stay out late, pop an ecstasy, suck in midget dick for the rest of your life. Okay. I'm serious. Dude, I love it, dude. She, dude, you can't phase this woman, dude. She once that dwarf hand she's went up her ass. It. Yeah, once it once it once the hand entered her ass, she's been she's a higher being than us. It just she I, reached enlightenment. It's amazing, and part of me is impressed. But I was reading an interview mm. with a comedian I like recently, who's mm. real liberal and thinks he's oh, I'm a progressive icon. I'm not shackled down by Wait, uncle. Can, before you continue, can I say that your voice sounds like Weird Al Yankovic? My voice is Yankovic. beautiful, and nobody can make me feel insecure about this instrument, okay? I have gotten so many compliments compliment. on my voice. He does have a good no, radio voice. No, it was not a It was you trying to make a shitty joke, and I didn't oh. appreciate it. Danny has a great radio voice. He there does you have go. a good radio voice. I've been yeah. drinking like a motherfucker for three nights straight. My voice is so fucked right now. It sounds good. You're fine, dude. You're, Thank you're you. doing You're well. starting to win favor in my eyes because yes, you took my side. Yeah. I'm telling you. Again, this comedian I was listening to, or I was reading an interview from him, rather, he was bragging about how him, it's that dude, Thomas Middlevich. Mm-hmm. I think he was on Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. You'll hate him too, Austin, because he's very pro the censorship of Alex Jones. Oh, but my God. But he said, God. he was like, yeah, don't talk you know what? Swinging, it saved my marriage. He's like, me and my girl, we don't have any jealousy issues. We just fuck who we want to fuck. Yeah, his marriage went down like the challenger three years after that interview. He's a cuck. Wow. He's a fucking cuck. And that's why I'm sick of it. There's no free lunch. You can't just suck dicks. And again, I'm sorry, John, get deformed limbs shoved up your ass. I don't care. Eat out your co-working lesbian barista. You have to pay. You will pay down the road. So get your life together, Ashley. Ashley, don't worry. Nobody's ever going to find out about this. You're good. But even if they did. I mean, I have no idea who you are. So. I actually yeah, exactly. admire Ashley. She has her that head on straight. Volume. She lives in New York City by herself, and she wow. supports herself. Wow, that's that's actually awesome. That's really cool. I hope you don't have an OnlyFans, because that would be the only way that'd be possible uh, in oh, New she York does. City. <laughs> she does. There you we go. She has an OnlyFans? Yeah. Any chance you we're want? Not gonna, we're not going to say the name of it on here, though. It seems like the best plug opportunity she's going to get ever. She'd make a lot of money, bro. Do you want she, it, Ashley? Ashley, if you want the plug on here, I mean, it, it, you're going to get a lot of fans this month. You'll make a, a pretty penny this month. All right. I'll plug my OnlyFans, all right? I'll give it to you guys later to plug. Or, all right. Or well, well, you want to, well, you could say it, and then we'll put it in the description. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on. Another joke, joke man. Oh my God! Joke I'll say man. one You're if on you spot. promise, because if my fans follow you, if they're going to fork over five, ten, twenty bucks, I need you to absolutely guarantee the getting deformed limbs shoved up your pussy is going to be a recurring thing. <laughs> I think it should be. All right. I'm going to have to fly we'll to New York. It. We'll post yeah. a video of it on my OnlyFans. That, listen, there we go. We'll post a video. I think that's a video, Danny. I think we have to go to New York. You're starting to win me over, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you fuck dwarves and you eat out the bearded lady and that becomes your lane, I think you could blow out of the water any of these hot quote no, unquote holy fans. She's girls. fucking hot. She's, she's hot, hot too. She's hot. No way. I, dude, hot. John's dude. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure he pulls, bro. Hot. Thank he you. Pulls, dude. She, she, mo- big- she was a, she used to model for Brandy. Did she have big tits? I don't know what Brandy. No, she has tiny tits. Oh, Brandy Millville. Oh shit, dude. They have. Did you? Uh, uh, never mind. 
Okay. Name drop. If you're hot, Name then drop. I need you to I need you to go through with the following me on Instagram. Thing <laughs> All right, my um. Don't you fucking go. My right OnlyFans is Aspen A S P E N three one one one. So three one one. Aspen, Aspen three one one one. What's your Insta- <laughs> What's your Instagram, darling? You can't put it on. No. Do you want it on here? You get a lot of followers. She just plugged her OnlyFans. Her Instagram and her OnlyFans are two separate entities. Right. There's a, there's a, there's, it's like, the it's like Batman and Bruce name. Wayne. Instagram's Bruce Wayne. OnlyFans is Batman. private. Yeah. I'm working on a few projects at the moment. So gotcha, gotcha. Wait, 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 wait. She's an artist. So she can't unprivate her Instagram until her little sketch is done? That doesn't mean anything. I don't fucking know. You ask her. <laughs> Aspen, if that's your real name, which I know it's not, give me your Instagram right now. Or so help me God, I'll be a little ticked off. Yeah. Well, she's not going to be able to We're see here. it. Danny, I'll DM it to you right now. Yeah, he'll DM it to you. John, Mine, John's got you. Mine is Danny Mullen. Add me right now. Danny, oh, I'll DM it to you, you right now, and if you don't follow me back, I'm going to be fucking sure. Yeah, I'll you got to follow John back. <clears throat> it's a good kid. But anyway, um, so now that Danny's going to be masturbating to this for the next five hours furiously, at least he won't have to look at that video of the woman throwing up 18 times, right? This is a big plus. He's going to be masturbating to the thought of John's Hey, Ashley, how many underscores is it in your ad? Oh, I sorry. It sounds like a disaster. Oh, I'm not giving away my Instagram. No, I'm sorry. just sending it to Danny. No, how just many share underscores the profile. Is it? Share oh, the profile. You can, you can do that. I have to go to my OnlyFans. Oh, never mind. You can do that. It's $15 to subscribe 15. if you want to see what I look like. There we go. Uh, they're going to want a lot more smart. than that. She's smart. So at least now Danny doesn't have to masturbate to the woman throwing up incessantly, which is a good thing because I don't think it was good for his mental... Oh, Minka? No, yeah, no, yeah, I wasn't it, Minka. Minka did not throw up. Aspen, <clears throat> if I happen to take a flight out to New York City, oh my God, and I paid you a little bit, we, Jesus, Dan, we won't talk numbers. And if I don't have actual money to pay you with, you can be sure you're going to get paid in soybeans. Would you be willing to deep throat me until you vomited a little bit in my lap, Danny? Jonah Hill paid to fuck this girl. Holy shit. Well, we already had a girl on who got fucked by Trey Parker. It's okay. It's okay. That's not a big deal. Uh, it's it's not true. It was, he was. It was a joke. It was a joke. It was made in jest. That was Don't worry. a lie. Yeah, it was a lie, obviously. Don't worry about it. What did Jonah Hill shove up your ass, honey? Stop it. Nothing, hopefully. John's hand. Not his hand. Oh, yeah, I was there, too. John was there, and his hand was just up my anus. Oh my God! I'm gonna see this girl right now. I'm sorry if this is disjointed at all, people. We're well, trying to figure it's, it out. She's gonna be a private Instagram, so you're not gonna get much. Danny can't think because he's thinking with his cock right now, guys. This is what happens. This is why it's not good to be a sex addict. See, boys and girls. This is why. Because think- if Danny was me, this is this is how he'd be all day on his phone searching for pussy, being an idiot instead of making content that has become some of the best shit you guys have ever seen, and with a very micro budget. Imagine we had a couple million dollars, guys. Boys we would dominate. Hey, That's uh, why you think with your big head. And John has a couple one. million. Head. Think there we with go. Big head, not your John's, little one. John's got a couple million in the bank. Wait, wait. T- for the record, though. Yeah. This was this was before the money. Oh, okay. This was way before that. <laughs> okay, gotcha. This was I way dated this that. girl when I was 16 years of age. Yeah, they they dated way back in the day, and this is when they would do that. Okay, they Ashley. Ashley, you're pretty cute. You're not exactly my type. My type is massive fake tits and a uh, hair trigger gag reflex. Jesus. I'm curious, though. Why is it these guys like Jonah Hill and Trey Parker are so willing to pay for sex with girls off Instagram? What happened to good old fashioned seduction? Are they afraid they're going to get me too if there isn't an NDA signed? Of course. Is that it? Pretty sure. Of course. I mean, that's what you, I mean, you pay him to leave. What did Charlie Sheen said? You don't pay him to stay. You don't pay him to fuck. You don't pay him him to fuck. You pay him to leave. Hmm. Pay him to leave out. I mean, I think it's just the, the no fillers. They pay to fuck girls with no fillers. Hmm. What do you mean fillers? No fake tits? What does that mean? Like lip fillers. Right. I yeah, like the, I like the lip fillers. I love the bimbo. You know look. when they get the lip fillers, it comes out afterwards. It'll go up into their face and it just starts fucking with their Yeah, no, lip fillers after are the while. worst thing you could ever do. I don't know why girls yeah. do it. They look good for like a month and then over time they just fuck up. Yeah. In all seriousness, not in character, I see a lot of girls that I follow or that my girlfriend knows or my girlfriend liking the photos of these plastic LA influencer chicks that are in their surgeon's office once a week getting some new operation done and I just think 
these are these girls role models Mm -hmm. they're their sole role models they're all in college but they don't have any academic heroes they're not into that supreme court justice bitch who just Mm -hmm. died or hillary clinton they like madison (laughs) beer and they whichever cunt just got her lips injected and her nose reduced to a sliver and i'll add (laughs) they have no idea what they want to fucking do with their lives not business majors they all they want to do is get hot enough to rope in a good guy and the college degree is less about their career it's about fulfilling a pre requisite Men to meet a rich guy because a rich guy is not going to pick up a bitch at a nail salon yeah. and be like oh yeah beauty school certificate huh. esthetician school hell yeah come back to my mansion those girls end up being divorced in their 30s popping pills every day because they fucking hate their lives and they're part of the problem that's what that's their future and then they become leo sugar mamas yeah, that's well. what fucking happens and the the, yeah. the girls do all sugar this mama. facial plastic surgery and weird beauty shit for other women and then they blame us for it. When I think they just make themselves look uglier nine times out of ten. I, I Sometimes don't... a nose job can help out. You know. <laughs> Sometimes a nose job can help out. Look, Pay I... Pay for my nose job via my OnlyFans and some fake titties, please. There it is. I'll pay for your fake titties. Honey. Fake I told you I'd buy you them. No, no. I thought you didn't want them. I want to pay for them. I already offered. If you buy... Ashley, if you pay for a girl's fake tits, do you have lifetime rights to that girl's vagina? Uh, oh, Austin, yeah, mark the time. Yeah. So, honestly. She says yes. Austin, mark the time. So even if you were, you said her name. I yeah, heard, I did, I heard did. you over there, you bastard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, at the very least, you should have lifetime rights to titty fucking. Yeah, I agree, honestly. And I feel like For sure. I feel like a lot of girls would say they agree to that, but then once they got married or into a serious relationship, they would cut yeah. that agreement off. But I feel like Ashley here might actually hold that up yeah, yeah, for the whole time. Up. Yeah, absolutely. I am a ride or die. There we go. That's good to know. She's, She's a great woman. Ashley, I like you. I know I said some mean stuff, but you seem to have a good sense of humor. You keep wow. doing okay, what you're doing. John, you brought some fire to the pod today, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank and you. Uh, Ashley, if you ever just want to, I don't know, oh, send okay. some naked pictures to me or Leo, Leo will appreciate them. No, more. I will not appreciate them. You can send them to Danny. I'll send you some over, Danny. There it Thank is. You. There Thank you. John <laughs> will. Hey, there make sure you're holding your penis up against your shrunken hand for scale. <laughs> It'll look way better. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Hey, uh, Ashley, thank you so much. You sound like a doll. I hope you get some OnlyFans signups, baby. Aspen right, three one one one. Yeah, shoot me a message later. We'll fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Later, baby. Oh, she's sweet. I like her. The amount of fucking fire that just happened. Wow, that was some content, huh? <laughs> hey, you hang up on Aspen. She's still here. Bye, Aspen. Our producer's so fucking Ashley. Stoned. I was typing out her. It doesn't matter. Aspen no. 3111? Yeah. yeah. Jesus, guys. John, this is, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be mean. You seem like a nice guy. John's The great. whole premise, Leo brought you in here, and the idea was that I was just going to be him. as mean to you as possible. Yeah, 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 so. I thought you were. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. It's, it's all just, I knew I could take it. You're a good guy. He could take it, and, he, and not only that, thank you for bringing us that content, because holy shit, you're that was up. hilarious. How, how much money do you have invested right now? Um, Close to $3 million. That's your parents' money, partially, right? Uh, no, that's you, mine. A little trust fund action. I was in Bitcoin pretty early. No, Damn, there's bro. no way you, of all people, generated three million of your own dollars. He's he's a Jew. And I, 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 I do six doing. different things. His parents were Jews too, and they gave him a nest egg of one point five no, million. No, I think there, Aspen Aspen said Danny, he, he was a millionaire. There's a separate trust fund that I have don't have access to until I'm forty five. That's my that's the money from my parents. If you're a hardcore fan, put my name on this trust fund. <laughs> That's what I want. You want, that fuck you. You want your Jew gold? Technique? That's the Jew gold, Austin. Is this kid's trust fund? It's not down in Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, uh, man. That's cool. John's a successful guy, man. He's been telling me about crypto for a while. I could have, if I jumped on it. It actually is down today. It's down today. It's down mm. today. Maybe get in. Mm. Can I say this, John? Yeah. Because I don't actually believe you have three million dollars. But assuming you do, if anybody else wants to assume that, you probably know about investing. I'm always preaching and. I have read three books on the subject yes. that most people, and by most, I mean 99% of people, mm-hmm. shouldn't even bother with individual stocks because what you hear from your fucking uncle or what you read on yahoo.com no. about Tesla or about Amazon, 
those people don't know what they're talking about. And you certainly don't have enough information to judge yeah. long term where the stock's mm-hmm. going to be. Invest in index funds. Be conservative. Yeah. Be safe. Don't be like Leo, who puts one hundred thousand dollars in individual stock. Uh, we don't me. know. We don't this know. This man texted me. That and number said, is if not. you had one hundred thousand dollars yeah. to put on one stock, one stock, what would you put? He it said on? cannabis. No, I, no, I also said I would do that. Right. He said he would diversify. And before it. that, I said, damn. Sugar mama came through. <laughs> no, no, that is not what happened. And I don't have $100,000 in the stock market, all right? And if you did, it, would, I be did, re- it would it all would be, be retarded to put it in an in individual one stock, stock. of course. I was looking at uh, Abercrombie and Fitch stock. I was at a party this weekend, mm-hmm. and we were talking about Abercrombie and Fitch and how they got quote unquote canceled mm-hmm. for not marketing to fat people. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. which I that. Bless their hearts. And I was looking at their stock. Abercrombie and Fitch, if you were pulling a Leo and investing in a bunch of individual stocks, you would have bet the house in 2008 yeah. when every homecoming queen and every junior prom prince mm-hmm. was rocking Abercrombie and Fitch. But now that stock is in the fucking toilet. Yeah. And the same thing could happen to Amazon. It could happen to, to Amazon, Tesla. Tesla. What if, what if Toyota Disney. develops an electric car? They might crush That's Tesla. That's way better than Tesla. Yeah. I mean, Tesla's car, dude, I went in, I don't know, the government rebates that you get, the fact that a normal random Tesla can beat almost any car on the street, zero to 60. The fact that, I don't know, that's so cheap. I mean, look at your roommate, dude. He doesn't, the, the electricity bill hasn't even gone up in this place. Either way, it it's probably going to be good for a little while. I mean, you know, you can see some signs before you have to take it out before it tanks completely. But of course, it is, it's always a risk. The stock market's a risk. That's why I'm more of a real estate guy and I'm just trying to save up money to buy some real estate. But this last year, because of the pandemic, I thought maybe day trading and having some fun with stocks was a good learning experience, and it has been. And that's why I have guys like John who talk to me about stocks. Or you learn and, you have to keep in Pokemon cards. You have to keep in mind that markets are stochastic and can't be predicted. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. No one knows if it's going up, down, or fucking sideways. Right. Doesn't it piss you? No, that's a quote directly out of Wolf of Wall it Street. Is. Very nice. But doesn't it piss the you stata- off? The stochastic part wasn't, but... I don't even know what that word means. Doesn't it piss you off, though, that every shithead right now is like, bro, I'm fucking killing it with my Apple stocks. Everybody's killing it right now. The market is moving decidedly upwards and to the right. And Mm -hmm. you look at any graph coming out of a crisis. You could have thrown it. It it just it crashed. And if you bought stock in March, it's it's up now. That's all it is. I mean, it. It was a crash. But yeah, did I? Did you see the company Thermofreeze? No. Went from five cents to twenty five dollars. Oh in God. several days you become a millionaire overnight that happens to people. i have Danny. a friend who made five million dollars off it i that's it happens i didn't buy it, it, it exactly I I, it happens Danny, every single day in the stock market that's what makes it kind of people like an addicting thing yeah every day there's some stock that goes up three four hundred percent every single day it's not like i want to get I, that you have to fucking be involved in penny stocks in order to really got him this particular you stock invest in the up. danny mullen show yep well, yeah, the, the, this, Coming this soon is to, going up. And then you'll make a lot. But no, real estate is where I, you know, no. that's where I no. I would, what, that's where you no. want to, that's no. what you want to do. Well, the S&P 500, no. is, you, how much money do you have in that right now? I'm not going to say mm-hmm. for tax reasons. Mm-hmm. And also, I don't want my fans to envy and resent me <laughs> because it is a staggering amount. I'm going to leave yeah. the audience with this, though. Mm-hmm. This is a quote from the great Ray Dalio. You know him, don't you? Legendary hedge fund manager manages more assets than almost anybody on this planet, maybe more than anybody on this planet. He said there are two fundamental principles to investing. One, thou shall not try to time the market. And two, thou shalt always invest in soybeans. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. And Austin Slosher's eight and a half inch cock. cock. Yeah. Get up for John, dude. Hey, follow John. This guy's a fucking legend, dude. Holy At shit. John Z. Landa on yeah. Instagram. There yeah. we go, dude. Give him a good follow. man. He good is man. a good sport. He good took sport, a lot of abuse. Dude. Fucking legend. He didn't fucking abuse me, Danny. He was, Change he your Instagram it. right now to Hobbit Head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> you can be the next Rat to Ralph. Hobbit I don't want to be the next Rat to Ralph. <laughs> Hobbit Head Hank, yeah. So if we do go to Florida, you'll have to be in a video then. I'll come. Yeah. You have a nice place out there? Uh, no, nah, I live in a student apartment. I fucking don't spend any money. Why are you in school smart. if you've got three million dollars? So I want to do AI development. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I'm a computer science major. You don't know anything about computers. 
<laughs> I know very much about Dude, what happens my when you hit control alt delete uh, you bring up a menu with like task manager and whatever fucking else is on it uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> then what? I don't know. <laughs> John, uh, are you his patron too? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I actually get our patrons. I was Dan- I'm a five dollar patron for Danny. I'm twenty for Leah. Watch right, fuck? baby. Get out of here. Right. Leave. Because you don't have a video call. That's why. I ha- that's the only that's reason right. I got we a twenty dollar dude. Yeah, because I'm such a commodity like soybeans that uh, I don't have enough time to video chat with these. Little I have the peasants. time. Right I know now. you're I adding all these new tiers. He's not now. a peasant yeah, though. Yeah. They, they, I learned a lot from this kid. I'm joking. There's clearly value in interacting with your patrons. I just don't have much time. Yeah, you don't have any time yeah. no he's a busy man and there are a lot of them too There's i was a lot of them, yeah. I, I was your patron back when you had like 600 of them uh-huh. nice. and i messaged you you uh-huh. didn't fucking get back to me yeah well like nine months late i was a nazi back when there were like six million of you oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> like, real quick. this is all satire guys remember <laughs> this is all satire well the danny mullen freeing the slaves thing it would add to his time traveling <laughs> danny <laughs> saved the jews danny saved the jews would be cool you were or you shit Dude, wait you danny were saved the jew shirts yeah no i my best friend he did die in a concentration camp is i was it, working did you want to plug this at he all? fell yeah. off the guard oh tower. shit yeah. plug this Fucking hate when that sure, happens. Sure, uh, yeah, that's a kid told me that when I was playing paintball when I was a kid, and actually I had a job interview for a bouncing gig, and they asked us to tell a joke, what? and I told that joke, and it killed, and I got the job oh as a bouncer. God. Yeah, Danny Mullen's wretched YouTube clan that's hats. Sick. They're Ooh. premium blank hats, great fucking hats, and they're sick. Are you doing print on demand now, Danny? These are limited. Oh, those are limited. Yeah, I think oh. they might actually be out. But I print on demand some of my stuff. Okay, yeah. If I don't think it's going to sell shit, I print on demand. I remember you talking really about that niche. Dom. Yeah. All right, motherfuckers. This was a great show. Thanks, John, great for show. being a good sport. Thank you, Follow John. him on Instagram. Follow He's a cool John. kid. Guys. Peace.